So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro one week later and see if it's still worth it especially compared to the older models and we're going to be talking about it in today's day, right? So before WWDC. But before we get started, I did want to give a huge shout out to Cover for sponsoring this video. Had to help pay for this iPad somehow guys, so bear with me. Let's get started. So Cover is an awesome car insurance app, service, and company that's here to kind of help the younger professionals and first time drivers get the best rate possible for the car insurance and then also not be taken advantage of, especially for new drivers and beginner drivers because usually you have no idea what you're doing, right? For instance, when I got kicked off my parents' car insurance, I had to go out and find my own car insurance and it was a nightmare. I ended up kind of just taking whatever somebody threw at me and I know for a fact it wasn't the best rate, you know, now looking back at it. So that's where a company like Cover steps right in. All you have to do is create a quick account, you know, put your name, your car information, how old you are, where you live, and then after that, Cover spits out the best possible rate for you to go in and then ideally save as much money as possible. Because those car insurance rates start as low as $35 a month, and I know for a fact that most people are paying more than that. So now with all your savings on the car insurance side, you can take those savings, you know, go buy a new iPad, or maybe even a 2018 or 2020, because I think those are better bang for buck right now. But in all seriousness, they're a great service, customer service is awesome, and at the end of the day, they just don't want the consumer to be taken advantage of, especially the younger, younger consumer that doesn't really know what they're doing. And the cherry on top of all that is that they'll give you up to $250 in a spot me, so if you don't have the actual money up front to get your car insurance set up, they'll help you set it up, and then eventually you'll pay them back, but it's awesome, it's an awesome service to have to be able to get a car insurance even if you don't have the money right away to make sure that you're insured whenever you're driving. So if you guys are looking for some insurance and don't really know where to look or want to compare prices, check out Cover, it's going to be the first link in the description below. Shout out to Cover for sponsoring this video, but now let's get into it. So I've been using the 12.9 inch base model M1 iPad Pro as my main computer for about a week now and I wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts. Especially as somebody who is a daily iPad user and uses an iPad as their main computer and somebody coming from the 2018 iPad Pro. So like I said, the iPad that I went with was the base model in the space gray variant, no 5G, only 128 gigabytes of storage. One thing that I did forget to do, and I guess I just got caught up with the hoopla of the pre-order, was actually go through Apple's education store. So I did that real quick to show you guys and most likely if you're in the US, probably Canada, Mexico, I don't know how they do this overseas, but in the education store, you can get the new M1 iPad Pro for $100 off the 12.9 inch and then $50 off for the 11 inch one. So keep that in mind if you're willing to wait four to six weeks for a delivery and you wanna go through the education store, that's a good way to save 100 bucks on the new M1 iPad Pro. So just to give you some reasoning as to why I went with the base model, right? I wanted the cheapest entryway into the new mini LED display to be able to test that out see if it's really worth all the hype that it has, right? Because that mini LED is pretty much the, the one thing that you're gonna see that's a difference between the 12.9 inch iPad Pro from 2020 and 2018 and then the 2021 iPad Pro. And then another reason why I went with the base storage model, right? So I only get 128 gigs with the base storage and I'm coming from 256. But I noticed that of my 256, I was only using about 170 of those gigs after about two years of using the iPad Pro. And then 80% of the total storage used was all LumaFusion files. Right, so the reasoning I went with 128 gigs is because supposedly LumaFusion is gonna release an update that allows you to use an external SSD and be able to work off that SSD natively and not have to store any files on the physical iPad Pro itself. So once that update comes out, I'm no longer gonna need as much storage as I thought I would, especially because I have a one terabyte SSD ready to go and if I can work off of that as a local drive, that's gonna be an absolute game changer for me. And again, that means I'm not gonna need that much storage and I can go with a cheaper model and then go with external storage and spend whatever money I need on external storage. And then I didn't get 5G because I'm at home a lot, I'm on Wi-Fi, and if I ever do really need to hotspot something, I'll just use my iPhone to hotspot and, and I'll be good to go. But if you've been following the channel and you've seen my comparison videos between this and the 2018 iPad Pro, then you're gonna know how I feel about this M1 iPad Pro. The main selling point, you know, which is the screen, the screen is outstanding. The screen is awesome, it's bright, it's vibrant, the contrast ratio is amazing. The blacks get super, super dark. Now we do have a little bit of that blooming issue, which I mentioned in my last video, and you guys have seen through the Twitter sphere of people freaking out about it. But again, it looks a lot worse on camera than it does in real life. And then also it only really happens when you are in a dark environment, you have the max brightness all the way up, and you're going from a white background and, a, and black text essentially, right? So you have to be in like the utmost contrast situation. And most, and first off, people don't use max brightness when they're in dimly lit rooms or in dark rooms. 
that's where the brightness goes pretty much all the way down because you can see your screen no matter what. The max brightness only really comes out when you're outside in direct sunlight. So then you might get a little bit of bloom, but the main bloom comes when you really max out the brightness, you're in a dark room and you are, and you have a big contrast between white and black. So if you think that's gonna be a big issue for you moving forward, I don't think it needs to be because again, it's very minimal and the times that it does happen, those use cases are very, very rare. So I don't think you need to worry about that blooming issue with the mini LED display. But basically the display is too bright for its own good. And then the other big upgrade was the M1 processor, right? But today with before iPadOS 15, before WWDC, I can say confidently that my 2018 iPad Pro can do the same exact thing that this M1 iPad Pro is doing and do it pretty much at the same speed, same rate, same efficiency. You probably get 90 to 95% of the speed and efficiency that you get on the 2021 iPad Pro and you get that on the 2018 iPad Pro. You guys see my comparisons. LumaFusion exports just a tad quicker. Apps open just a little bit faster. File transfer speeds. That's the one part that does have a decent amount of efficiency upgrades because you are gaining about 30 to 50% and that was noticeable even with just a USB-C SSD transfer. But outside of that, everything that you do on the iPad is the same feeling. It runs the same. It's pretty much just as fast. So there's nothing, there's no newness that you feel going from the 2018 iPad Pro to the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. And I know that not everybody is coming from a Gen 3 iPad Pro or newer, but again, I'm giving you my comparisons and my thoughts. And again, you don't even need to come from an iPad Pro. All the iPads that run iPadOS 14 will feel exactly the same from the lowest level all the way to the highest level. It's just a matter of how quickly those tasks get done and that's why you're spending more money. So again, my biggest issue comes with the bottleneck of iPadOS. iPadOS is bottlenecking the actual hardware power of these M1 iPad Pros. And even the, like the A12Z it was bottlenecking, the A12X it was bottlenecking, the A14 on the iPad Air, iPadOS is bottlenecking that's, that software and that hardware experience also. So again, it's just a matter of iPadOS fixing itself to really take advantage of the power that the iPads can bring. Because today, if you have a Gen 3 or a Gen 4 or even an iPad Air 4, this M1 iPad Pro is not worth it unless you really, really need the mini LED. And if you really need the mini LED, then you know exactly who you are and this video isn't for you because you know that you need all that contrast ratio and you need that accuracy in order to get your job done. So for most people, that screen is not going to be the be all end all in my opinion. So in short, the only reason or the only way I see this M1 iPad Pro being worth it, especially again, if you're coming from a Gen 3 or a newer iPad Pro, the only way the M1 iPad Pro is worth it, if for some reason Apple gives the M1 version of the iPad Pros some exclusive features on iPadOS 15 that won't trickle down to the 2020 and the 2018 and the 2017 iPad Pros. But then again, if that does happen, then people are gonna get very, very upset. So that, like some part of me does want some exclusive features on the M1, but some part of me also wants you know, iPad OS to be universal and unified throughout the entire lineup between the 10.2 all the way to the latest and greatest iPad Pro, because that's the way it should be, right? You should be able to get the same experience throughout the entire ecosystem and the entire iPad lineup, because that's what Apple's always done. But if Apple really wants to differentiate the M1 iPad Pro from the rest of the iPad lineup, they got to give us some iPad OS 15, you know, exclusive features, because if not, this iPad is not going to be worth it, at least not today, not after WWDC. It's gonna be a little while before it's worth it because at this point you're just buying, you know, future proof. You're buying yourself some more time with this iPad basically five years down the road. So let's see what Apple does moving forward. Like I said, if Apple does bring some exclusivity to the M1 iPad Pros and maybe it will be worth it depending on what those features are. But again, if Apple does bring exclusivity to the M1 iPad Pros, people are gonna get pissed off, especially the people that just bought their 2020 iPad Pros that have the A12Z or the iPad Air 4s that have the A14X. So. Let's see what Apple does. It's balls in their court. I'm just hoping they do the right thing, which at this point, I don't even know what that is, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to think about. But that's pretty much going to do for this video. Let me know in the comments below what iPad you guys own. What would be the biggest game changer? Like what would make you want to get the M1 iPad Pro versus any other iPad Pro in the lineup or even older iPad Pros? And what would make you upgrade from your current iPad Pro setup to go with the M1? Because again, unless Apple wows us at WWDC, this iPad Pro, I don't think it's gonna be worth it for me personally and for a decent amount of consumers. You know, there's gonna be that 10% that could really, you know, from an app to app standpoint, take advantage of that M1 processor because it'll just be a little bit more efficient, faster, work with better IO, especially with Thunderbolt. But for 90% of people, the 2018 iPad Pro, the iPad Air 4, refurbished 2020 iPad Pros, those are gonna be more than enough and I don't think you need to ante up the extra money to go with the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. 
But like I said, that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace. Shout out to Cover again for sponsoring this video.